I went to Oxford to uh, study nuclear physics and did some postgraduate in history and philosophy of science, but forsook the halls of academia to become a dope smuggler. <laughs> well, quite early on, I, I started uh, smuggling cannabis from Europe to America. In those days, in the very early 70s, there'd be a, a markup of about 300%. British bands are beginning to get very popular, and they were visiting the States with an awful lot of equipment. So we used to hide the hashish in various speakers and amplifiers, etc. Pink Floyd, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Eric Clapton, Genesis. The bands didn't know uh, that it was just an arrangement I made with the road managers. Organizations uh, I was involved with with the Mafia. They cruise out the IRA and a few cowboys from the CIA. But it wasn't under CIA auspices, you know, it was just a few cowboys who were doing things behind the rest of the CIA's back. Consignments uh, I did uh, into uh, JFK in New York with, uh, with the Gambino family. The deal was structured uh, in such a way that one couldn't cheat them, even if one was daft enough to try. The average load would be about a ton. I had a huge number of aliases during my uh, smuggling career, at least 43 aliases. But it was so much easier in those days to get a false passport. I remember on one occasion uh, applying to the driving license center for a license in the name of Elvis Presley, of whom I, I'm a big fan, okay? and they actually issued it because computers didn't scream in the 50s, right? So, oh, Elvis Presley, fine. <laughs> the biggest shipment ever that uh, I did was 30 tons. The DEA say it was 50 tons, but I know it was only 30 tons. <laughs> The British had more or less given up, and now you can't catch him. Spanish had given up, you know, now you, know, you can't catch him. Americans said, oh, we'll catch him. <laughs> and they were right. <laughs> so it was uh, a combined effort of 14 different countries' law enforcement, spearheaded by the DEA, actually. Cannabis was the only drug uh, I smuggled. I think largely because I wasn't really tempted to do anything else. The demand for cannabis wasn't met. If cannabis had been legal, I would have carried on being an academic in some sort. I do miss smuggling, you know. You can never get that thrill, you know, that I had from crossing borders, or from writing. You, you can't. I suppose if I thought I could get away with it, I'd crank it up today. <laughs> I'd go back and do it. I mean, I loved it. <laughs>